Hello, 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 and welcome to my latest video. It is a, another split base video, split black and white. Um, I don't know why, and I think in the last video I actually talked about this, I don't know why I do the black and the white on different sides. On the same side each time. Um, but... Hey ho, it's what I do. Um, I'm just doing a kind of messy but quick um, test on the paints to see how runny each one is, as if one's got a different consistency to the other. Um, along the middle, one would eat the other one. And the noise you hear in the background is Ms. Celine Dion, my cat, who has been asleep for the last hour, waking up, making noise, and making a nuisance of herself, and is probably going to be waking the dog up, who will do the same. On screen, however, what you are seeing is me mixing a little bit water into both of the paints um, because the consistency was slightly off and I'm now starting out with doing the black. Um, when you see me d lay down the base oftentimes you'll see that I will specifically put a bit of the base colour on each of the corners. The reason that I do that is the canvases that I use, I want to make the corners get covered properly and where the canvas is folded over at the edge. Sometimes the coverage, if you don't, I found if you don't put the, um, the little puddle of paint on the corner so that the paint's there ready to be blown off, um, off, off of the canvas, not in any other way. Oh dear. God, my juvenile sense of humour there. I actually did pause while I giggled for a couple of minutes. Because I do the voiceover after the paint. Um, so, yes, it just doesn't always cover the corners properly. Um, so, that's the reason why I do that. I also spread the paint out using the hairdryer just because I find it's an easier way to get a consistent layer of paint on the canvas and when I do paintings that I know are gonna go over the edge or have the capacity to go over the edge depending on the paints or how I'm planning on actually doing them I will as I have done on the black side um, just dab along the edge to make sure that the paints do all cover the edge of the canvas and how I'm, and I'm doing that again there with the white. The reason that I do that with the paint on the canvas is I could afterwards touch up the edges and a lot of fluid artists will do that. However, the medium that I use includes some PVA glue and that does affect the colour slightly. And I want the edges to have pretty much the same colour as the, well, basically as the base. Um, so once again, using the blow dryer to blow out the paint. Um, it's always a fun bit when you get to the middle when you're doing a split base. Um, this one I very deliberately left a slight area of black just so I had a bit of wriggle room on blowing the white around. And what I tell I uh, oh, I never managed to get a straight edge insert there's nothing straight about this channel, ha 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 gay um joke. But I never, I did want a straight edge on this one between the two. Just didn't happen, so I leant into it when I was blowing the white in. 
just to give a more interesting feel between the two. And I'm just coming in now with a cocktail stick to burst some of the air bubbles that hadn't been burst with the um, heat wand. I'm going to call it heat wand, I don't think that's the actual name, but anyway. There we go. So I'm just going to start pouring out now. Um, and this piece is a the third in the series of Rainbow Angel Wings pieces, um, inspired by a piece that Molly from Molly's Artistry did a while back. Um, but this is the third in the series, is a split base. So the other two, the black and white, had the rainbow colours going in opposite directions, one starting out red, one starting out purple. Um, this one, as it's a split base, I'm having one side starting out red, well, pink then red, and the other side starting out purple. But to do this, I'm... to save pouring one side, then pouring the other, I'm doing them at the same si same time. So the colours so far have been uh, iridescent violet or blue-violet by Pebio, then a uh, red mix that I did on my own, then red-blue, and then iridescent orange by Pebio. And then, no, that was orange, then iridescent... So, Cadmium Orange Hue, then Iridescent Orange by Pebeo. I'm kind of doing the main colour, then the Iridescent. Um, the colour scheme was uh, inspired a bit by Rinska Downer, but also Rainbow Acrylics by Claire, um, because they do more than one hue. You'll see in my older rainbow videos, um, and the dross thing you can see in the background is I'm just remixing some of the paint. Um, in my older rainbow videos, I would just do straight, just six colours, six, seven, maybe eight colours. Um, but in this series, I've done the main colour, then the iridescent one. Apart from with yellow, because I haven't found a yellow iridescent yet. Um, if anyone does know of any um, yellow iridescent paints, please do shout out. Um, at this point, you may have noticed on screen that the colours were slipping a bit down on the black side. Um, so I'm just putting a couple of mixing sticks underneath to try and re-level the canvas. Um, my workstation is actually just a, uh, some ply board, um, put on top of a shelving unit that I've got two, that I built in two halves, um, and it's got so much colour on there, uh, and the, <laughs> the bottom tray is kind of almost fused in with the paints, um, in the new year I think I'm going to change the board out. Um, just because it's kind of got a bit of a curve and a bit of a lean. Um, so I'm finding I'm having to balance things more and more. Um, so I was then going to put the green in, but I saved myself from making the mistake of not putting the barrier colour between the fiery red, pink, red, orange and yellow and the colder colours of the greens and the blue, and the purple. Um, so there is my... Uh, iridescent yellow-green by Pebeo. And this is a mix of Viridian green and another green that I can't remember. It's a self-mixed one. And here I'm using a uh, Pebio Green Blue Iridescent, I think. And then coming in with 
Primary Cyan by um, CF Acrylics, I think. Yeah, it was Cyan. It wasn't the Brilliant Blue that I've used before. It's a, and here I'm actually using a Pebio Pearl Dark Blue, which really adds something. I just bought this on the day from um, Hobbycraft in the UK, which is an arts and crafts store in the UK, um, and now coming in with the purple, and I can't remember which make of purple I'd used for this one, I'll put it in the description box anyway, and then coming in with the pearl violet, which is a lighter shade of purple. I think violet and purple are very similar shades, at least in my mind they are. Um, as you can see on this one, on one side the colours have gone so far down the canvas, and on the other side not so much. I am seriously at this point really worried about how this is going to turn out. But I've done this is the third of these pieces, so I do know roughly how I'm going to blow. So um, if you ever do get a situation where you've got one side that's likely to be more troublesome than the other, blow that side first. Because you've got more space to go in and fix. You know, if it goes wrong, scrape the canvas and start again. And you're not going to then be worried about the other side that you really, really loved. And it was amazing. Um, but now it's ruined. And wow, wow, wow. Which I have done a fair few times when I've been doing this. Um, but no, on this one, it is fantastic. The only thing that I wasn't quite happy about with this piece um, was that the purple kind of got swallowed up and forced over the edge because I had so many colours and yeah it just didn't quite work. Um, so I've done the final shaping of both of the wings. Um, the way that you're seeing it in the video will be the way that it will be shown finally but the thing that I want to draw your attention to is and you'll see it when we do the final review of the dried piece. I actually... Ooh, this is my new toy. I got a new toy. I got an airbrush. There's no paint in it. But it does an amazing job of... Very similar to me blowing with a straw. But it's it's a machine. It's, it, it's, it's wireless and amazing and fantastic. And I love it. It does so, 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 so much. I love it. Love, 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 love it. Um, and the best thing is, unlike on the Rainbow Wave that you'll see in a few weeks where I might actually include the um, wet close-up of it where my phone almost, and I actually did, kind of fall into the painting whilst trying to do the bit on the canvas, but the um, airbrush means I can reach over to the more hard-to-reach places and do the same thing, whereas if I'm trying to lean over, it just... It, it... Well, I almost always will end up getting my shirt on the edge, so I get paint on it, which is not great. Um, or almost fall into the painting, or jostle it, which isn't great. So I'm like, yeah, no, love this thing. Um, so I was just defining the edge on the black side... Um, just coming out under the, um, to get the drips under the canvas there. And I'm deciding if I'm going to do the same thing with defining the edge, and I am going to on the white side as well. The reason that I'm doing that is just to make sure that I've got a nice defined edge, and to show it in my mind, to show how I want the piece to look in the end. I didn't 
actually do too much editing after this point. Um, this point in the black, there's a lot of kind of half colour. I'm using the airbrush to blow the paint out just to see if there's any colour under there. There wasn't, so I've just blown all of that colour off of the edge. So I have a very nice, firm, defined edge on the painting. And, yep, love this piece, and I'm just, and I'm not even, I am not using the soap spray on a finished piece. I'm not using the soap spray, which is amazing. And here we're going to see the final piece. This is how it would be displayed if with the other two pieces as the wings are going up, kind of unfurling, so the top of these are kind of the shoulder blades, and you've got the angel kind of in the background-ish, where the black and white bit meet. Um, but there is also another way, which is super cute that this looks, because I managed to, unintentionally, couldn't do this again, create a rainbow dog and rainbow bear. On the left side you have the rainbow... Um, Doberman and a rainbow bear on the other side, kind of with a bit, bit of a drippy schnoot, to be fair, on the bear on the right-hand side. But don't they look cute and adorable? Oh, I'm not sure. I, this, this piece is for sale, so if anyone does want to buy it, you're more than welcome, but I'm not sure I really would want to part with it. So thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, follow me on social media at Sissy Artist. And go over to my website as well, www.sissyart.com.